The concept of a presidential library, a shrine to a former president, is a relatively new idea. For the first 150 years of this country's existence, presidents didn't have lavish monuments built to commemorate their rule. That whole notion would have repulsed the men who waged a war with a monarchy to build this country. But starting with the FDR, of course, presidential libraries became customary, and they've gradually transformed from that from libraries into multi-million dollar temples to hubris. The most recent ex-president to get his very own temple, and the biggest of all, of course, is Barack Obama. The total cost of his library clocks in at about half a billion dollars. Which would have gotten into extreme poverty, year when but Obama that's not a problem that anymore. Donors pay for it. But today, construction of the temple was halted because of an emergency. No, not a fire, not a lightning strike. According to the construction company working on the library, quote, this morning, we were informed that an act of hate was discovered at the project site. Uh-oh. And you knew the act of hate was serious because the media went all in. They devoted a lot of time to talking about this. We're on the brink of nuclear war and a recession, but the act of hate on the Obama construction site is real the news. news. Watch. Construction at the Obama Presidential Center in Chicago is suspended after a suspended. noose was discovered at the site on Thursday. Oh, yeah. An act of hate. A noose is found a at the site of the Obama Presidential at Center. A, library. a noose was found at the site. Racism. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker condemning the hateful act. An ugly racist symbol was found at the future site of the Obama Presidential oh. Center. Did a CNN noose was there discovered snow? at the construction site this morning. Operations were halted and the police were called. A one hundred thousand dollar reward has been offered for information leading to those who are ten thousand dollars of overtime were paid described out. as this shameless act of cowardice no shit. and hate. Well, do you get a lot of huffing and puffing? Have you heard a story like this before? Well, it wasn't that long ago. In the middle of a national crime wave, which it has done very little to solve, uh, the crime FBI wave with ten percent of the regular population. A NASCAR garage. The crime wave was being perpetrated by the government. Bubba Wallace suggested that a noose had been left in that garage. By the government. Turns out the noose was a garage door pull. Ooh. Here's the interesting thing: everyone makes mistakes, but well, mistakes like this never get corrected. Nobody ever apologized for that. Not the media, not the FBI, and certainly not Bubba Wallace. In fact, Bubba Wallace said that only stupid people would doubt his story, even after it was proven to be false. What would you say yeah. to those people who yeah, are a... doubting that this even happened or that it's true? Yeah, just like uh, Steve Phelps said, well, it was people man, would go to those uh, measures, but again, <clears throat> I'm not shocked. I it's simple-minded people like that, the ones that are afraid of change. Um, they, they use everything in their power to defend what they stand up for. And instead of trying to listen and understand what? You alleged a crime. Hard to say that's a crime, but whatever, worthy of the attention of the FBI. This is all insane. But it, you were wrong. But instead of apologizing, you're lecturing people like they're your moral inferiors for asking questions. And it was obvious from the beginning that Bubba Wallace's story made no sense. We're not saying he was making it up, but he was wrong. And there is a high likelihood that this noose at Barack Obama's temple might be a hoax, too. A lot of these uh, stories yeah, are. Why do they keep appearing? We'll tell you why. Because accusations of hate crimes and of bias more generally are tools that the people in power use, not the powerless, the powerful, to award themselves greater and totally unearned moral authority over everybody else. You tell them, Duggar. And Barack Obama is the perfect example. Oppressed, really? Obama is Doctor, a half-white guy with an Ivy League degree who served as president of the United States for two terms and lives in two oceanfront compounds Doctor, in the richest zip codes in the world. Does that sound like oppression? No, it sounds like privilege. That's fine. But no, they tell you, he's Emmett Till. He's a powerless victim of your racism. So when you make allegations like that, nobody gets to ask the obvious questions like, where'd you get all this money? Like, how are you making a living? How'd you get so rich? What have you been selling in exchange for that money? And by the way, why are you spending a half a billion dollars on a presidential library? You don't get to ask those questions because all you know is that somebody left a noose at a construction site because this is an immoral, racist country. All the people below me are bad people. might have been the Canadian people are top are good people. They've been known to do things like that. The bad people on the bottom are creating a country I mean, full of mean, racism. It's so white. pervasive and scary that we have to pause construction on the temple I just know. to catch our breath. Obama's told us many times before, this is a bad country, he told us, for eight years. He knew from his own life that progress is fragile that we have to be vigilant against 
the dark occurrence of this country's history, of our own history, with their whirlpools of violence and hatred and despair that can always rise again. You're going to tell you. Bull Connor may be gone, but today we witness with our own eyes police officers kneeling on the necks of everybody, of black Americans. Especially women. Well, Connor might be gone, but you still exist. And you're oppressing everybody else, so we're going to have to oppress you. This latest offense against one of the world's most powerful men is so appalling that the authorities have offered a $100,000 reward to anyone who could find the person who left a noose at Obama's presidential library. Leave the bill with the CIA. He victimized Barack Obama yet again, and his wife. What's interesting is for perspective is that there's no $100,000 reward outstanding for the, say, thousands of unsolved murders in this country. And that's a lot of murders. In fact, roughly half the murders that occur in the United States are now never solved. Let's go, CA. You and me. Mono, mono, motherfuckers. Thomas Hargrove, who runs the Murder Accountability Project, put it this way very crisply. It's a 50-50 coin. It's, gut, it's never guys. been as bad. During the last seven Don't months of 2020, them. most murders went unsolved. That's never happened before in America. Now, why is that happening? Because nobody cares. That's why. And where are these murders happening? Oh, in Obama's oh, big okay. hometown of Chicago. Ass. A lot of them. Watch. And that mass shooting we were just talking it's about like is in Chicago. All time. In the troubled uh, west side of town where the bloodshed is frequent. It happened about 9.30 p.m. local time. People had gathered for a vigil. Police say it was an SUV that pulled up. Two gunmen opened fire and sprayed bullets into the crowd. The whole thing was over in about three seconds. Fourteen people were injured. Witnesses say one no, man was shot in the head. And one person was hit by a car in the chaos. But among the victims I are a three-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 13-year-old boy. The rest of the victims are said to be a adults okay does anyone care no <laughs> nobody in power cares not at all about any of these crimes actual crimes in nevada an illegal alien called carlos nava who's been deported seven times but is still here because democratic party wants his vote is now facing charges that he raped five people in this country over nearly 20 years five people were raped did anyone ever offer a hundred thousand dollars for his arrest or to give to his victims but we've got $100,000 to spare for whoever tied that piece of string in a forbidden shape of Barack Obama's construction site? Really? Again, if all the moral outrage were directed on behalf of people with no power who are actually suffering, and there are millions of them in America, you could kind of put up with it. But all this huffing and puffing over Barack and Michelle Obama, most people don't see them as a color. They see them for what they are, which is the most privileged people in the world. And yet Michelle Obama just wrote a whole book about her struggle to, quote, stay visible in a world that doesn't necessarily see a tall black woman. R what? You don't see Michelle Obama? She was the president's wife for eight years. How much money has Michelle Obama made in the last six years? Oh, you'd love to know. But you're supposed to just accept it uncritically, just like you're supposed to believe the Jussie Smollett hoax. We've got some breaking news. Actor and musician Jussie Smollett from the hit show Empire was attacked and beaten early this morning in Chicago, and police say it could be a hate crime. There are many indications of a hate I crime. I thought all the black people were gone. Looking for two suspects who were apparently wearing Make America Where they Great Again hats. We have a media that's saying it's a debate whether or not what just happened to Jussie Smollett is a hate I haven't crime. Seen any proof. It's absurd. You know, Jussie Smollett had a noose on his neck. Just this week. And the media has really cast so much doubt on his story, which I find so personally offensive that a gay black man is targeted and then suddenly he becomes the victim of yeah. people's disbelief. Yeah. Yeah. He said his attackers hurled racial and homophobic slurs at him. Mm. And this is America in 2019. This is America in 2019, where the most powerful people are the most frequently victimized. And that really is the message, is the people in charge, the people with power over your life, the people who make the laws, the people who shape your culture, in some cases, people who can put you in jail, certainly people who are paid a lot more than you are, they're the real victims. No, they're the real victims. Tell so we're brother. watching, we're watching a power play, of course. We're watching a transfer of moral authority from the population, a nation of citizens, okay. to the top 1%. And as the recession deepens and people get poor, you're gonna and see a lot more. At the same time. Don't notice my looting, I'm the victim. <laughs> That's why Hillary Clinton plays the sexism card. Don't ask questions. I'm a woman. Here she is. Fuck all of you. So any of you who've read my uh, my book about what happened know that I Good think that 
uh, misogyny and sexism was part of that campaign. Uh, it was one of the contributing factors, and some of it was uh, old-fashioned sexism uh, and a refusal to accept the equality of women and certainly the equality of women's leadership. Yeah, they all do it. Chelsea Clinton does it. Nancy Pelosi does it, Ocasio-Cortez does it, Kamala Harris does it. The most powerful people in the world are always telling you they're victims. Joe Biden can't do it, of course, because he's a white man. So instead, he accuses you of transphobia, thereby keeping the balance of moral authority on his side of the scale. Yeah, Shut up, transphobic. Tra transphobic. Subscribe to the Same. Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly open stories that are changing the world and That's changing your life. I'm Dr. Carlson. Absolutely.